I'm Carl Selle. I've uh, been involved uh, with a passion in international student ministry for about 30 years. And you're a pastor? I'm a pastor. I've been a campus pastor for most of those years. The other part of my time I've been involved in parishes so I've, and, and also foreign missions. So I've had kind of a broad spectrum of pastoral ministry. And as part of your resume, we can say you're an East Lansing guy at one time. I was an East Lansing guy for five years and then moved down the road to the uh, competitor school, which I won't mention its name, but uh, we lived in Ypsilanti. We were there for three years. So we're talking about the University of Michigan. I didn't know that. You guys. Well, you said it, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Carol, who are you? I'm Carol Sully. I've also been Carl's best volunteer for many, 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 many years. And I followed him around wherever he went. Cool. And you were part of the Friendship House ministry right from the beginning, very beginning. Before the Friendship House. When Pre beginning. We, when we first moved to East Lansing, Michigan, the ministry really started for me as a volunteer. Matthew went to East Lansing High School and had a Japanese student as his tennis partner. And I said, well, we might as well get started. Matthew, can we invite his family to our house? So they came to our house and were sitting around our little dining room table now. I lived in a hundred year old Victorian home before. Sure. And we're living in, we're now squished in my little dining room. And the woman says, what do you do? And I said, well, I'm a teacher. And she said, would you teach me English? And that's how it started. Really? Yeah, it was really yeah, cool. Are you still in touch with that woman? No, <laughs> I don't no. think so. We Maybe. Haven't been, we haven't been for a long time. The Tozawas live Tozawas. in uh, near Nara, Japan. And uh, we did go over to visit them. Yeah. Wow. And uh, just a neat, neat family. They had two kids. Boy, right. we have to be You're a Lutheran school teacher, right? I am a Lutheran school teacher. Wow. Well, I'm very fond of Lutheran school teachers. I married one. <laughs> Marsha, who are you? I'm Marsha Mitwitty. And uh, I came to uh, Lansing in 1994. And Carl was looking for someone to direct the ministry. So he recruited me, and in 1995, I began working with Carl and Carol and all the volunteers in international student ministry in East Lansing. And then in 1997, actually, is when we found the Friendship House, and we had received a grant from the uh, international LWML, uh, $425,000, so we began looking for a place because we needed somewhere that was close to married student housing. Uh, we were working at that time with Martin Luther Chapel, which was on the other side of campus, so we wanted something that was closer to the, to the married student housing, which the Friendship House is. Can you give me the amount of the grant one more time? How much is it? $125,000. The house was more than that, so we raised money beyond that. But um, that was a wonderful, wonderful blessing and a big chunk of money. So it was the three of you who had the vision, and it was the three of you who implemented the steps that led to the Friendship Hub. Well, it's really Carl and Carol who had the vision, and then I, I was a latecomer. Yeah. And I think before the Friendship House, my I would oftentimes be doing seven classes in a week, and my classroom really was a vinyl tablecloth on somebody's living room floor surrounded by children because we had no home. Sometimes we would use those community center places right. for the women's groups or they had a little extra room where you could sit. And then I was in the basement of that Methodist church for a while because we just outgrew people's living living rooms. The Meth Methodist church on Harrison. Right, right, stops. right behind you. Right. So they allowed us to use, they had a, a big nursery space in their basement. So I kind of felt like the bag lady because everywhere I went I had to take my, my container of the crayons and markers and manipulatives and everything I needed. I had to take everything with me everywhere I went. And it was just like we needed a home. Mm -hmm. We needed a home and a place to call our own. And so when we got the house, we only had I only had one class in that house because then we moved to Ypsilanti. Huh. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, I used to work for the Ypsilanti Press way back when. Really? Uh -huh. but, you're really an important part of this equation, because without you, it would have not happened in the way it did happen. That's and exactly correct. That's right. I, I think that uh, in the mind's eye of a lot of people, you hear LWML, and I 
remember the little boxes when I was a kid. Yeah. My mom always had one. And change always went into it. Mm -hmm. Tell a little bit about that. You wrote the grant. You're networked with LWML. Well, during that time, I also served as public relations director for the National LWML. Wow. And so the Lord just used that. And at that time, all districts had a national representative. Yeah. And so I was I was selected to go to many districts across the country during those those six years that I served as PR director. Wow. And I got to tell the story of international student ministry everywhere I went. And it was just like the Lord saying, okay, tell the story, tell the story. And so many, many women knew about international student ministry because of that. Mm -hmm. So what I take from what you're saying is that you felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit and you responded to that. Oh, definitely. That foreign land of Michigan, yes. <laughs> Super cool. Um, and so when you hear her talk, you know how blessed I am that, that uh, I am married to Carol because she has really been a wonderful partner in this ministry. And while I received the big important call, you right. know, to do this, it wasn't certainly my thing. Uh, reaching out among the international student community was something that we did. And uh, I'm, I'm just really blessed that Carol has been my wife. What's your most favorite memory, Carol? Uh, from your time at Friendship House? My favorite memory probably is the splashing of the water. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk oh. about it. <laughs> the yeah. splashing of the water of uh, the first baptism that we had uh, mm -hmm. with Ely and Sinji and uh, Bert, uh, a little boy uh, who is the, the child of Yuhua and her husband Yuhua. John. And it was their second child, their Chinese family. And, um, they weren't supposed to have a second child, but they they agreed to let the child be born, and, and Bert was later baptized. And the splash of the water is just, you know, in my brain. Mm -hmm. Wow. So you'll see that little boy in heaven? Yep. Oh, yeah. 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 Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about you, Carol? Oh, I think besides the baptism, thanks, Carl, um, we would have... <laughs> picnics at our house on Pinecrest and we would ask our neighbors if we could use their yards and there was a lady from St. Luke and Hazlitt that had all these yard games oh, yeah. from her family reunion and so we, I don't know, one time we had 85 people, you know, mothers and dads and kids and they just came, they brought a potluck and then we played games, we sang songs and we did that for several years. Wow. And it was wow. just a wonderful gathering of people. And that had to be a real witness to the people around you. Did anybody ever ask what's going on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah. And our neighbors were wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Sure, use our yard. And Do you remember those one? Yes. Yeah, I had those forgotten until fun. now. The yeah. picnics. Marsha, you're the first executive director, right? Uh, yeah, I was the first director of the Friendship House because, as, as, they, as Carl and Carol said, you know, they really... We got the house right before they left, so. Um, What's your fav most favorite memory wow. of the Friendship House? Of the house itself? The, I, the ministry that, after you got to the house. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I have one because there were so many. I, I think getting but, the house, there, was, there were some miracles that happened oh, definitely. just in getting the house and that stands out to me almost more than I mean the day-to-day -day people who came to the friendship house um, and even now when I see what's going on there I just I mean it's it's really nostalgic to me because there are so many good memories of people that have come and gone and some of them I'm still in touch with from way back really yeah mm -hmm. well, what countries uh, Japan, Taiwan, uh, those two, I guess. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carl, what advice would you give to somebody who is involved in an international student ministry? One piece of advice. To somebody who's involved? Right. Um, I would hope that they would find ways to share their story with the wider community of God's people so that that wider community might get excited about sharing the love of Jesus with the international student community. Because most of those international student community people don't know anything about Jesus. 
And if some, if, if just, I'm always, you know, challenged by if one more person can be involved and excited about international student ministry, I am, I am thrilled. And so, uh, if anybody's involved, share the story so that one more person can be involved. Carol, what piece of advice would you give to uh, international student coming to East Lansing, say from China or Russia or Iran? Week one, they come over here and they're looking over their shoulder, they're not really sure. You've learned a lot, you've seen a lot. Um, what, what would you say to them to encourage them? And an international student, right. I would tell them to um, remember that Americans are usually afraid of people that are different than them, yep. and that they may have to really step out first to, to develop a friendship with Americans, but not to, you know, not to be afraid to do that. And I would tell them to come to the inter the friendship house, of course, mm -hmm. because that's where they will be accepted and find other people in their same situation. It's a safe place. It's a safe place. Mm -hmm. No matter who they are. Mm -hmm. Right. right. Marsha, with your experience in East Lansing and Texas, I mean, the, the world's changed a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people talk about the future and all the internationals that we're connected with. They, but the future is now. I mean, it, it's happened. Mm -hmm. And it's happening. Mm -hmm. what, what advice would you give to them from what you've seen? I mean, that's got to be threatening, threatening for somebody. Yeah, I, I think, hmm. Don't be afraid to step out and be friends with people from other countries um, that you might not be friends with, that you probably wouldn't have an opportunity to have to be friends with in your own in your own country. And take the opportunity to get to know people from all over the world, no matter where they're from. If they're from uh, Iran, Iraq, uh, China, Korea, India. What a wealth of um, opportunity and rich richness is available to you if you will just take the opportunity. And I've seen that so many times mm -hmm. when they've never had a friend that was not from their country. And through the International Student Ministries, they become friends and gain a whole different perspective on the world. Really. Now let's flip that coin and look at the other side. And if you're in a church service, if you're an American and you see somebody from another country and they struggle with English, what advice would you give to that person in the pew? The Lutheran in the pew? The Christian in the pew? How, how should they handle it? Should they take a risk? And, uh, yes, I, they should take a risk. Not be so forceful and make the person look stupid. You right. know, because, but to, to gently uh, offer to help or um, just kind of, for example, if you're holding a book, you could sort of make it obvious what page we're on, that kind of thing, right. to, to gently um, offer encouragement. So we've got the father of the Friendship House. We've got the mother of the Friendship House. <laughs> and we've got a child of the Friendship House. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, thank you. I think we would, we're going to talk when we get back, and of course we'll involve the board in this, uh, about how we're going to celebrate the anniversary of the Friendship House. I guess what we got to come to agreement with is when was the start date, and that will determine when the 20th anniversary will be. But um, uh, we want to kind of do it up a little bit, that hey, this is an occasion that it's worth celebrating. And, and I think it's really helpful for them to hear whether it's people in the pew, whether it's the students, hey, you can really do something as an individual. You guys are proof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many minutes are